MMA Fight Corner. Welcome back to the MMA Fight Corner here on Fox Sports Radio 920, Las Vegas, Nevada, and streaming worldwide on UFC.com, baby. Yeah, and I, let's listen, I want to uh, throw a special shout-out to our buddy, Dr. Richard Rothman, over at LASIK in Nevada. Um, what he is able to do with uh, LASIK surgery and, and repairing eyesight is absolutely amazing. We're actually, you know, Billy has walked into the studio on numerous occasions and no longer walks right into the door. <laughs> he, his, his vision is amazing. Uh, you got to check him out, LASIK of Nevada. Check out Dr. Rothman. Uh, give their website a look at um, LASIK of Nevada. No, sorry, LASIK of NV com or give him a call at 702-948-8283. LASIK of Nevada. I'm telling you. Dr. Richard Rothman's the best. You know what's funny about Billy getting LASIK is now he doesn't spend so much time looking in the mirror. <laughs> when, he, when, he, when he couldn't see, he was in the mirror every day doing his hair, thinking he was Mr. Suavecito Pimparelli. But now that he can see straight, he kind of gives the makes the bitter beer face every time he passes a mirror. <laughs> is that what I look like? <laughs> the, one, the, one, the one sad and downfall part of it is, is he, now he can see when you're throwing that right cross at him. He yeah. sees it coming, <laughs> and he can duck. You, know, you mean when the girls are throwing those right crosses at him. Uh, speaking of sad stuff, unfortunately, the life of a celebrity superstar MMA fighter is always filled with tough times and, and turbulent situations. Ryan Couture had to step away from our interview. We did not get him, but great news is, is we did confirm him for the next show, so he will be available. But, um, man, he has a tough, tough task ahead of him. He's been used to these tough challenges. He's been stepping up huge time. Three fights in a row. Three tough contenders beating Connor Hewn, beating Joe Duarte, beating KJ Nunes, and now stepping up once again to take on the hard-hitting Brit knockout artist season nine of the Ultimate Fighter winner Ross Pearson at UFC Fuel Nine in two weeks. Yeah, it's really interesting the way you bring that up, and, and you're, you're talking about when you're talking the succession of of the fights that he's had: Connor Ewan, Duarte, and then KJ Nunes. Okay, Ryan Couture is a six and one professional fighter. He has had seven professional fights, and he's taking on every fight. It's like more and more experienced resumes are being thrown in his face. And it's like, I don't know if it's, you know, you mentioned royalty. You've mentioned the name Couture, and I, I do, I have to say, I feel really sorry for a guy like Ryan that he's constantly going to have to live with the name and be compared to his father. Thing is, is he's a completely different fighter. They're not the same people at all, and people need to realize, you got to stop asking this guy about his dad. Right. I, I think <laughs> I feel so bad for him. It's like every single question is about his father. All right? And I'll, t I'll be honest. I don't care about what's going on with Randy Couture right now. I want to know what's going on with Ryan Couture. And so, you know, the fight that he has, I mean, I, living up to the names is h as hard as it is. All right. But when you're getting guys thrown at you that are world killers. I mean, Ross Pearson, you saw what he did to George Sotteropoulos. Ooh. I mean, and, and, you know, we've seen Pearson. He didn't look so great at 145, but 155 is where he belongs. And, and the weight cut doesn't affect him. It's, it's one of those things. He's at his strongest. So Ryan Couture, first fight in the UFC, co-main event on a free fuel card against a world beater in, in Ross Pearson. You know, they do this guy no favors. You know what? I, I gotta, I'm sorry, Heidi. I got I to gotta disagree with you on that, though, in, in, in just in the regards that – I think this is one of those circumstances where th these are challenges that are showing his true ability, that are making him rise to the occasion, that are proving the fighter that he can be, that are giving him the opportunity to step out of the shadow of his father. I mean, look at the look at the fight against Conor Hewn. When he took that, in, in, and I think across the board, we kind of all made a, the cringe face, like, ah, damn, that's a tough fight, man. This guy's a seasoned vet. You know, he's fought in the IFL. He's been in strike force. He was in the war. You know, amazing fight with uh, with uh, George Gergel, this back and forth slugfest. You know, I thought Ryan was 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 out of his league. You know, I, I wanted him to win. I know he's tough. I know he's game. But I just thought he bit off more than he could chew. And boy, was I wrong. He, he bit off the head of Conor Hewn and, and, and shook it like a vicious pit bull. I mean, he demolished him. He, so he it did. seems like every time they've thrown these challenges at him, he's done in true couture fashion. He's risen to the challenge. And something that I want to talk about is just with everything that's been happening with Randy Couture, Ryan Couture, Dana White in the UFC as of late, do you think that there is a true possibility that Ryan can really escape that shadow being that it's hovering over him the entire time leading up to his UFC debut? You know what? I, I think it's in the background. I think Ryan has that, that, that the Couture mindset in, in, in hanging out with Ryan, training with him, getting an inside glimpse into in how he deals with stuff. 
the Couture's, like his father, have the ability to just, they're, they're gamers. They deal with the pressure. They kind of got this, huh, whatever comes, comes, you know, kind of attitude when dealing with outside circumstances. Then when it's time to step in there and shine, they shine in a big way. So I, I don't think it's really going to affect him. And I don't think for Dana White and, and, and Randy, I don't think their relationship or their qualms are going to affect Ryan in any way, shape, or form. I think Dana's a big enough guy. I don't think they gave him Ross Pearson as like, oh, your son of, your, your Randy son, now we're going to give you this guy. Because they were in good terms with Ryan uh, or, or, or with Randy when they gave him Connor. They were in great mm-hmm. terms with Randy when they gave him KJ. And I think of the three, if you didn't know what Ryan Couture has done, if Ryan Couture, it was, if, if Ryan Couture hadn't fought in KJ, hadn't fought in Connor, hadn't, and it wasn't supposed to fight Ross Pearson, and you said, hey, the 6-1 Ryan Couture is going to have to fight one of these three guys, I think on paper the one I would be most worried for would be KJ. I, and that was that was the thing too, KJ. You know how hard he hits, and he landed some nasty shots on Ryan. And Ryan really showed me in that fight that he can take a punch and keep coming. And, and I, I know that there, we also saw a lot of different stuff out of Ryan in that fight. Remember he's throwing the spinning back spinning kick, kicks, and, yeah. and I, I remember just you know cracking jokes in my head like you know I was thinking Nick Diaz and the oh so we throw him some spinners you know yeah, like, <laughs> like it's just it, it was um you know you're seeing the evolution of him and you know uh, back to what you said Heidi. Um, I don't know if Ryan will ever outgrow or come out from the shadow of of Randy. Uh, very hard thing to do, no matter how who, how good of a fighter you are or who you are. But if there's anyone who can do it, I think it is Ryan. I think Ryan is a, so completely different than his father when it comes to fighting style. I, I just think that, and not only that, we, we talked about it. I mean, you know, Randy Couture may be a legend, but let's look at his record. He's sixteen and ten. Right. So, you know, 16 and 10. I mean, he's a legend because of what he did back in the day. Ryan, I think, has the ability and has the uh, that chance to change to change it. Randy is a legend because he defied the odds at every turn in his career. Every time he got knocked down and we thought he was out, he's like the phoenix of mixed martial arts, you know, rising from the proverbial ashes of a loss, you know, coming, coming, um, um, you know, off of two back-to-back losses as a heavyweight, devastating losses to Rico Rodriguez and Josh Barnett, going and saying he's going to retire. He had one fight left. He was supposed to fight Arlovsky. That fight got scrapped. They they reach out to him and say, "Hey, do us a solid. Drop down to light heavyweight. Take on Chuck Liddell." The whole fight world took a, a collective gasp. Like, <gasps> are you trying to kill this old man? And he comes out and demolishes him. And then he loses two more. He steps away again. And we think, okay, okay, you know, the old man's done. You know, it was good. And then they announced he's going to move back to heavyweight and take on Tim Sylvia. The whole fight world took the same collective gasp, like, oh, my God, didn't, didn't you do enough damage? And he comes out. And so, so Randy became a legend, not because of his, his record, but because what he did against who and when he did it and the circumstances around it. Ryan Couture has the ability to step out of the shadows of his father because what you said, Phil, the different fighting style. He doesn't fight like his dad, and that's what makes it so unique. He's not built like his dad. His dad was a heavyweight. This guy's a lightweight. They're on opposite ends of the spectrum, and when you talk about the style matchup, Randy, a Greco-Roman guy who likes to clinch dirty boxing, grind you against the fence, pick you up, slam you down, and ground and pound you out, Ryan is turning into quite the striker. Stick and move, yeah. slick, light on his feet. I mean, I mean, it's just night and day in styles. You're definitely seeing the one, two, three out of him now, whereas in his earlier fights, he was more like maybe just kind of from working from the outside, one, one. But now he's throwing together the combos, and you're really starting to see a payoff from him, especially like Phil was saying, against Noons, where he's also showing the resilience in his chin. Yeah, and that's one thing I, I like, too, is, is, is the progression. His progression, the, the kid that fought uh, uh, Connor Hewn looked, looked a lot different than the kid that fought Joe Duarte. That kid looked a lot better. And the kid that fought KJ Noons looked even better than that. So the way he's progressed in these fights, how much better he's gotten, just just leaves me very optimistic for him in this fight. I think he's got the skill set and the style to to upset Ross Pearson. Now, you can't sleep on Ross Pearson. Here's a guy that has devastating knockout, one-punch power in both of his hands, and the thing that makes it really dangerous is he's not just one of these guys who's got the pop in his punch in the first round. He has it in the first, second, or third. He took out Sotteropoulos in the third round of a scheduled five-round fight. That's hard to do. Locking out someone unconscious with that kind of sleep in your fist late in the fight it doesn't happen often he actually had Sadaropoulos go in parallel with the with the mat that that time he hit him so hard feet came up swept up behind him you know that's power in the third round 
Uh, uh, you know, and we've seen Ryan can take the power. We know Ryan's ground game is exceptional. Uh, so it, it's a very exciting fight. Uh, I'm very excited for the fight. And for it to be co-main event, Ryan's first fight, big opportunity here. Big opportunity. That's UFC on Fuel 9 taking place in a couple weeks. And and, and we're two weeks out. We had Ryan on the show, so we, we, we you know we're talking about this fight. In the, the weeks to come, we'll get more into a breakdown of the card because it is an awesome card. But right now, what we want to do is go back. Unfortunately, we got preempted all last week because people went insane. They got a they caught a thing called March Madness. I don't know who the hell watches that. I don't know what it was. I have MMA madness, and the fact that they, they preempted me for basketball, I want to go double-leg Michael Jordan. I'm not going to lie. I am a fan of all sports, so I totally had my brackets, but they were all ruined by Florida Gulf uh, Coast. So I don't know you, you might as well have been speaking Chinese right there for me. <laughs> I'm that much of an MMA-holic. Uh, yeah, and Memphis was out too. That's just never mind. And, and when you say Memphis, I digress. I think, <laughs> when you say Memphis, I think Quentin Jackson. That's what I think. <laughs> but uh, so we do want to go back and just touch on UFC 158, just to revisit it. A lot of interesting storylines have emerged since then. Of course, we all saw UFC uh, uh, welterweight champ George St. St. Pierre successfully defend his title against Stockton trash talker Nick Diaz. And Phil, one of the things that's very interesting for me is, is I talked to you right after the fight, and I said, Phil, did, did GSP look flat to you? I mean, he was dominant. He was a Effective, but the in the in the later rounds, halfway to the third round, the fourth and the fifth, Nick was able to stuff those takedowns of George, which we don't see happening. George wasn't reshooting; he wasn't going for the power double. He'd hit one single leg, and then after Nick escaped, he kind of stopped shooting. And of course, he eventually got the takedown, but he didn't look the same. I was wondering if he was, you know, maybe we're seeing the age or the effects of uh, of the knee injury, or he just he's not the same fighter he was. And then it comes out that actually, no, he had a, a, a torn Achilles. Achilles and a fever of, of 102 going into that fight. All right. Um, I'm not going to – there's no excuses for GSP's performance, for Nick Diaz's performance. Um, I don't know what the severity of his injury is. I know an Achilles tear is awful. It's not something anybody should be fighting on, let alone walking. Okay? But, um, you know, I, the fight was what we thought it was going to be. It really was. GSP, Wash – rinse repeat takedown i thought the funniest thing was nick diaz walking to the cage in jeans and <laughs> all i kept thinking is this guy's walking to the cage thinking he's getting into a street fight the only problem is, is he's walking into the wrestling room that was what i really saw but you know what i did like about you about uh the the whole card in, in general is that maybe now we finally get to see gsp and johnny hendrix fight please do so, so Johnny Hendricks, of course, de defeats Carlos Condit in 29-28. In, in I had it actually 30-27. I'm not sure what rounds they gave to Condit, but I, I, I had Johnny sweeping it. And this does finally set up the, the w potential welterweight matchup between the Southpaw Slugger, All-American National Champion wrestler, and the welterweight king. Yeah, and, and this is the, the matchup we've wanted to see. You know, we've always talked about GSP having to deal with uh, you know, a, a wrestler who's got the power. And now he finally, we finally get to see it. But there's one thing I have to say. Overall, 158, greatest thing I saw. UFC needs to start charging a two-drink minimum for their press conferences <laughs> and have Nick Diaz at every single one because he was he was George Carlin-esque the other night. <laughs> Unintentionally. And but, uh, the hard part, though, is getting Nick Diaz to show up to those if we do charge them. Well, that was the thing is they walked in and they weren't even sure that he was going to do it. He said he was done and he was going to walk out and that he had done his duty, he did the fight, and he wasn't going to do the post-fight press conference. And then like 40 minutes into the press conference, here comes Nick. And I didn't pay my taxes. And uh, yeah. <laughs> well, yeah. speaking of taxes, we got to go pay some bills. We'll be back shortly. Don't go anywhere. You're listening to the MMA Fight Corner on Fox Sports Radio 920 and broadcasting worldwide on UFC.com. We'll be back. The MMA 